Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Servas meeting. Yay. You will notice that you're currently on mute. We have over a hundred people that have signed up to be here today. So because of that, we're going to keep uh, people on mute for a lot of it. But what would be great is everyone start typing into chat where you're calling in from. We have people across the country. We have people in other countries. So go ahead and type into chat and say, hey, I'm in this state, in this city, in this country, whatever you want to put there. We'd love to start seeing where people are calling in from today. And if you are able to, uh, everyone can rename themselves. It would be great if you renamed yourself as well. Uh, to make sure you have the name that you want us to call you by in this meeting, um, because at some point we may be calling people out. We're also going to be using the breakout room, so definitely people are going to go to breakout, and in those moments, um, you'll want to be able to see who, who the other people are in your group. So it would be great for you to change your names, and again, put it into chat. Dan, are you seeing anything come up in chat? Yeah, lots of people are putting in where they're from. Okay, some reason my chat is not coming up at all. Well, we've got Steve from Woodstock, Vermont. We got Rachel from Martha's Vineyard, Todd Feldman from Philadelphia, Bethany from New York City, David Hills from Eugene, Oregon. We got people from all over the United States. Christy from Chicago, Ernie from Reno, Nevada. Great. Again, welcome in, everyone. And we're just taking a few moments right now to let everybody come in we're really glad that you're decided to spend part of your saturday with us thank you hey dan as a tech person i'm still not getting any chat which is a little worrying since i'm supposed to be monitoring it for questions i don't know if uh yeah hmm. so again if you don't have a name and you know how to edit yourself Go ahead and make sure you have a name showing so we can call. We had over 100 people sign up today for those who are just coming in. So it is great to see you. Two are going to be in no chat. Okay, here we go. I'll pull it over here. Wonderful. Okay, I can finally see some chat too. Yay. It, it's oh. good to have tech help right there. It, it is good to have the tech help. <laughs> yes, very helpful. Wonderful. Yay, tech volunteers. Yes. <laughs> and for those of you who have just signed on, we're saying go ahead and pop into chat where you're calling in from. I'm seeing Vermont, North Carolina, Massachusetts, Pennsylvania, New York, Oregon, New Mexico, New York, New York, North Carolina, California, uh, Raleigh, North Carolina, Arizona, Nevada, Wisconsin. Wow, Minnesota. Chicago, Illinois. I'm getting a feeling we are soon going to have every state covered. This is incredible. So we had over 100 people sign up for our meeting today, which is just wonderful. We're happy to see you all. <clears throat> and happy to get so many people here for this meeting. Um, so we're having just a few more people come in. I can see uh, Tom Bergdahl's video and tom we have matching shirts on today so way to choose your your decor decor to wear a service shirt i appreciate that tom oh and joanne has it too yeah. oh joanne does okay i'm going to ask you to <laughs> tom because i can see your mouth move oh and and uh yes 
<sighs> yes, matching shirts, Tom. I like it. Okay. And Tom, you're calling in from where? Brooklyn, New York. Fabulous. Wonderful to have you on the call. You're one of our volunteers and we appreciate all you do. Okay, back to mute. Okay, oh, I see Bill has a shirt on too. He was flashing <laughs> it to us, so thank you, Bill. And so she was rested in Nepal. So yep, bad. and Joanne does. Okay, <laughs> we're still seeing the places come in. Oh, I see Idaho is now covered. Colorado is covered. Yay, so many states. This is wonderful. So thank you for everyone for being here today. And, and I see that nice tele telephone cover. That's great. That, that Kelly has. Oh, ah, okay. I was going to say, I'm not sure. Or is that a mug? Oh, it's a mug. It's your mug. It's her travel mug from the Salt Lake Conference. So yay, that was a good coffee uh, mug or tea mug this morning. Yay, good choice. Okay, so everyone, if you're wondering why people are still on mute, it's because we have over 100 people signed up here today. So just to control the noise, we're keeping people on, on mute. Um, we do have uh, people putting into chat where they're calling in from. So if you haven't done that yet, be sure to pop in. We do have people signed up from all across the U.S. and they're definitely pouring in for this meeting. Uh, we also have, I know, a couple internationals that signed up. So if they make it, we'll see some other countries as well. So it's a wonderful list coming together. Um, I see Florida, uh, California, yay, so uh, Salt Lake. So again, we really are going around. Uh, Dick, um, I know we, I'm sure we still have a few more people to come, um, but why don't you go ahead and uh, start the meeting? It's our scheduled time and I wanna welcome you all to uh, this annual meeting. And thank you for joining us today. Uh, and this is a new format that uh, with our new by bylaws that we passed uh, last year, uh, we call for a, an annual meeting in June rather than October. Uh, and these are, we uh, developed new bylaws because we reincorporated since the last annual meeting. Uh, we've reincorporated in Nevada uh, where we were at New York Corporation. And that is giving us some more flexibility that we didn't have uh, with the New York one. And so we are able to transfer everything over uh, into the new structure. Uh, at our meeting today, uh, there's an opportunity in our bylaws for people to generate uh, member initiatives to be voted on at the, the uh, annual meeting. None were submitted this year. So we don't have any really official business, but we have a lot of things to do today. Uh, this is going to be an opportunity to share together and also to uh, hear about how we've been operating uh, with our new structure that we developed uh, just over a year ago. Uh, so at that point, what I would like to do is turn this over back to Shyla uh, to talk about the uh, whole process that we're going to have today. So kind of practical tips for how we can be successful in this meeting. Great, Dick, thank you. So that was Dick Weaver, who's our um, board chair this year, and I'm the vice chair. And Dick was uh, calling in from California. California. And I'm calling in from Seattle, Washington. So again, if you haven't yet typed in where you're calling in from in the chat, go ahead and do that. Uh, so yes, I wanna run over just a couple etiquette points. So as I've already said to those who came in um, right away, you've heard me say, we're gonna keep people mostly muted today. We're really gonna utilize the chat. And that's just because we have over a hundred people that have signed up, which is wonderful. But we all know from doing Zoom for many years that you can get a lot of background noise with that or just things come up. So we're gonna keep people on Zoom or on mute. Now there's gonna be lots of opportunities to type in your questions. So we're gonna be doing some presentations here. If any time you have a question, type it into chat. Several of us are monitoring that chat and, and watching it. So we are also going to be doing some breakout rooms. And when we go out, do the breakout rooms, you're gonna be in a small group of three to four Servas members. And so it's great if your name uh, you have listed for yourself is the name you'd like the other people in the group to, to call you so they can see it. I know a few people are two people on. If you know how to rename yourself to show both names, that would be great. So then people can see um, who is on the same monitor with you as well. 
I, a lot of people have their video on, which is great because we want to see the videos. We want to know who's who's here. But do know that um, with that, uh, if you decide you want to go walk around, that's great. Sometimes people, you know, on a call decide they want to change rooms or or you know just stretch the legs and so all of a sudden they're taking their video with them if you start moving around go ahead and turn that video off it can be real distracting for the rest of us to see movement as someone's walking around a house and definitely we do not want that zoom issue of someone deciding to go to the loo during the meeting and uh, forgetting to take care of business so do turn that video off if you start walking at all that's just the smart thing to do um, before we do our first breakout room, we do want to do a photo. So um, if everyone, especially those of you with the video on, can um, smile and look at the camera, I'm going to, let's see, I am going to count to three and then I'm going to take the picture. So there you go. We got some peace symbols going um, and everyone look at your camera. One, two, three. Okay. Great. Dan, do you want it? Did you take a picture as well, Dan? Oh, I can't hear you, Dan. You're Dan's going to take I a picture. I did, but um, I only had page one. There's three pages. I know. So <laughs> wow. take a couple more pictures. Okay. Dan's going to take a couple more pictures. So people keep looking at your camera and smiling. Okay. I got page two. And one more for page three. Here we go. Smile, one, two, three. Okay, got it. What I love is nobody knows what page they're on. So everyone just had to keep smiling that whole time. So there was lots of smiles, which was absolutely fantastic. Okay, we are going to start this off with a breakout room. That way people can just meet who's here and say hello to each other. The way the breakout room is going to work is when you first go to the breakout room, uh, there should be about three to four people in each room. Go ahead and just say your name, say where you're calling in from, and go around and make sure everyone has said that. Then once that's done, well, uh, go ahead and start talking to each other. And for those of you who've had a really fun or funny uh, experience while traveling with Servas, go ahead and share that with the, the your small group. Uh, one of the things the board, when we set our goals for this year, is we wanted to bring some fun back into service. Um, so we've uh, had some serious years in doing business um, in terms of the board level, and we want to bring some laughter back in and some fun. So that's what we thought is for this discussion, let's focus on that a little bit. So um, let's see, I'm going to make sure we have the right number of people in the rooms. Um, okay. It looks like we're good. And so with that, uh, there are still some people coming in. So if someone comes in late, I'll just add them to a room or I'll just chat with them out here. But everyone's going in. Now, this is the perfect time. Dan, if you could ask everyone to unmute themselves. Actually, I see the button here. Um, it is much easier to unmute yourself before going into the breakout room than once you're there. So go ahead and unmute yourself now and then I'm going to open all room and welcome back everyone. I don't know if everyone's quite here yet. If you haven't been muted, uh, Dan's going to help me mute. Um, please go ahead and mute yourself if you see that you're not yet muted. It's sounding quiet. <laughs> Okay. Of course, then I got unmuted too. So, I got <laughs> also, so it's it's the fun of technology. Yep. And what we'd you like to be muted. So, Dan, do you want to make sure everyone's muted, Dan? Okay. Okay. So, what we would like to do is 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 talk about where Servos is right now and kind of give you a sense of that. And so I got to, I got the fun title of talk about the state of US Servos. Um, and so what I'd like to just say a, a few things about that. And the, as we look at where Servos is at this point, 
is that, well, we went through some rough times with COVID. Uh, and a lot of people basically figured that they weren't traveling, they weren't going to be members of Servos. And so our membership uh, dropped dramatically. And we've been in a process now of, of having many people who had lapsed memberships coming back. And uh, we're feeling we're on a good trend. And so we're feeling like a couple of things have really helped us. Uh, one, I think hopefully your experience that we're doing a little better communicating with you. Uh, and the second part, it's not as expensive to be a member of Turbos now. Uh, when we instituted a little over a year ago, changing the membership fee to $33 a year for all members, uh, it made a difference for some hosts who had not been traveling, so they had to, had to pay for. Uh, but what it's meant is that financially, because we no longer have an office uh, with em employees and office expenses, uh, we are doing well financially. And we're going to have a chance in just a few minutes to, uh, to hear a financial report. I think you'll be pleased that we are in stable financial position at this point. Uh, but we are really looking at how do we um, make the Servos experience something that people can really be excited about and that there's value in between traveling and hosting experiences. And so we're really looking at that and exploring how we can make uh, Servos even more valuable to you as members. And so as we look at this process of thinking about uh, Servos and where we are, uh, part of what we changed was how the governance takes place in the organization. And uh, a little over a year ago, uh, we changed to a new structure. And what you see on the screen is our new structure. And what we call it is uh, the five branches. And in these five branches, we really have an opportunity to divide out the responsibilities for the operations of US Servos. Before we were really dependent on staff to do many of the functions, and when we said we were going to be an all volunteer organization, suddenly we are looking at uh, something different than that. And we want you to be able to see how we are organized. Uh, and that so much of it is designed to support you as members, uh, to communicate with you as members, as well as take care of the business part of US Servos. And so we have five branches. Uh, and you can really think in terms of uh, the process of how we operate as an all volunteer organization. And we decided it was best to change the language from what we had before. Uh, and so we went away from committees and uh, other things like that. And we decided we'll call them branches. It was an interesting meeting trying to figure out what we're, word we'd use. Uh, and we thought, we, okay, we have issues around governance. We have issues around finance, technology, member services, and community. And what you can see on the screen are how we divided up these responsibilities because underneath each branch, we have teams. And so we have a team, as you look at upper left-hand corner, we have a team for operational finance. You take a look at member services and we've got a member help team and who responds to uh, concerns from various volunteers. And so we looked at what are the practical things that need to be done. And then we divvied them up uh, in terms of the, the branch structure. And so what we have is each board member has a liaison responsibility to a branch. And what we've said is that these board members are not the bosses of the branch, but they have a coordination and support role with the branch. And so they're really active volunteers in those branches, uh, but they're not 
uh, that kind of, okay, this is what everybody has to do. Uh, there, it's a volunteer organization where everybody is cooperative. And we believe that that cooperation, collaboration value that we bring to serve us generally uh, really should be expressed in what we're doing with our operations finance and uh, I mean, finance member services, uh, community branch and technology and something we call uh, governance. Uh, and so as you can see underneath there, I'm not gonna go through all the teams, but you can see uh, some of those uh, pieces underneath that. With that, I wanna switch and we'll move to the next one because I wanted to introduce the board. And so I'm, because we've got a really hard working board. I'm, I'm just uh, pleased to be a part of this board. Uh, and you can see uh, I'm chair, Shiloh, who's been uh, playing a critical role in this is our vice chair. Uh, Lena Sai is uh, here and she's our treasurer. Uh, Jan, Jan uh, Ferguson Cavanaugh is our secretary. Uh, Bill McGargal, uh, Shelly Mitchell, Arnie Rowland, Eileen Rowley, and Ty Sniffen are also directors. And if you're active with one of the branches, you will have had contact with uh, one or more of these people. Uh, and I just want to give a big shout out to this group. Uh, it's hardworking. Uh, we get together regularly, virtually. We had a, a really productive retreat uh, just a, a six weeks ago uh, where we're really talking about where we're going as an organization and how to be uh, the most uh, effective as we function. Uh, as we move on, you slide down on that. Uh, also in this area is our elections committee. Um, and I understand two of the people are no longer part of the election committee, but Ernie has been chair in the past. He's doing that. I understand Ernie, you're doing it this year and that uh, I believe Kelly is going to be uh, in chair in training for uh, coming, uh, but this is an important role uh, as we look at it. Uh, in the past, we elected the, uh, the uh, elections committee in our annual meeting because we have this strange schedule piece where we actually had two annual meetings uh, in this last 12 months. Uh, we elected this group of people in October and they will serve this year. And then next June at the annual meeting, we will elect a new elections committee. Uh, and so this is the group that really nominates people to be on the board of directors. And so it's, they're playing a really critical role for the health of our organization. And if you are interested in being a board member or you might be able to talk somebody else into being a member of the board, uh, the deadline for submission of uh, nominations to this election committee is September 30th. So you have a little time to, uh, to do that. So I wanna call attention to that committee uh, I also want to call attention to our advisory council. Um, this is a wonderful group of people who uh, began meeting last year and have been meeting regularly this year. Uh, and what I say is this group are these long-term members of Servas uh, as travelers and hosts, but also uh, really playing critical roles in supporting the health of the organization. Uh, been such active volunteers and I look at them and say, wow, you folks have such wonderful institutional knowledge about Servas. You, you've seen it, what's happened. You keep us from reinventing the wheel and you help us from avoiding uh, mistakes that were made in the past. So we are taking uh, questions to this group every month. Uh, and they have been just great with really thoughtful conversations about uh, where we are and where we can go in the future. And I also want to call attention to the fact that we have had a incredibly wonderful volunteer for a number of years as Peace Secretary, Yossi McIntyre. Uh, and I really wanna do a shout out to him uh, in terms of his role of being Peace Secretary for a number of years and uh, he decided uh, at the beginning of this year that he had some other 
uh, demands on his time uh, and uh, other interests, and he decided to step back as a uh, as a peace secretary, but he's still active as a member of Servas. So we're in the process right now of uh, selecting a new peace secretary. We've had a, a couple of good candidates who have expressed their interest, uh, and we're still open to receiving more. Uh, but I've put up on the screen, I'm not going to read through it, but these are the responsibilities of the Peace Secretary. You can see it's a pretty uh, substantial position. And so uh, what I'm hoping for you, uh, if you're interested uh, or you know somebody else who might be interested, uh, get in touch with me and we'll uh, get them into this process. But we're hoping within the next uh, probably uh, six weeks, we will have a new Peace Secretary. Okay, one more thing I want to call attention to. Uh, we have two U.S. Servos members who now are playing really critical roles in Servos International. Uh, a former board member for U.S. Servos, Rada, uh, is now the president of Servos International. And John Corrado is the co treasurer of the organization. And so we had a wonderful meeting uh, at our retreat where we virtually connected with the board of Servas International. And one of the things we wanna do in, as we move forward is have an ever closer relationship with them. Uh, they've kind of operated in the past separately from us and we've been separate from them, uh, even though we're part of the same network and it makes much more sense to us as a board uh, to have a closer working relationship with them. And uh, that is uh, working well for us. And with that, I want to uh, bring my part to a close uh, and have a chance then uh, to move on. And uh, Lena, I believe you're up next to uh, talk about finances for the organization. Hello, everyone. Well, I've been working as a treasurer since uh, middle of 2022 and currently serving as a treasurer. Mm. Shaila, would you please show the... Do you want profit and loss or finance? The, the financial position, please. Oh, sorry. Uh, there we go. I have summarized. Mm, can we make it bigger? I should have. Um, go ahead and start talking and I'll see if I can right. make it bigger. Um, as of uh, uh, January 1st, 2022, our combined assets between cash and investment were $398,910.95. And at the end of 2022, it is $504,121.45. Uh, five hundred four thousand one hundred twenty one uh, dollars and forty five cents. Uh, the substantial, and then it shows what is the balance as of April thirtieth, which is five hundred eighteen thousand one hundred seventeen dollars and sixty nine cents. Mm, we had a, uh, as it will be shown in the next. Uh, Next document. It breaks down whatever with all the expenses and the income during 2022. Um, I'm sorry, there are a lot of numbers here, but if you see the highlighted ones, um, our income was 280. Uh, Two hundred eighty-two thousand eight hundred thirty-two. That I mean, sorry, that was the profit, it, which is also the income. Two hundred eighty-two thousand. You don't have two hundred eighty. You have two hundred and two. Two hundred and two. Right. Sorry, two hundred two thousand uh, thirty-two dollars and fifty-eight cents. Um, and if you look at the in at the end if you look at oh in that if you look at the the it is broken down into membership uh 
member fees and donations and um, the meeting when we have the annual meeting, the uh, income for that, which is offset by the by the meeting expenses. But if you look at here, you can see that there is unrestricted donations was there was a big chunk of $152,260.11. We received, uh, Sarvaz received, US Sarvaz received uh, 140,000 plus amount from one of the Sarvaz uh, members in his trust. He had, um, he had left money for US Sarvaz. He had enjoyed uh, being a member for many, many years. He's from Alaska, Jim, uh, Jim Edwards. He had left that money and his son, Stephen Edwards, had transferred the money to US Sarvaz. Uh, if not for that, if you look at it, uh, just like all of us, um, the investment income had, the investments were, in a negative, we had a negative balance for investments, um, which is on the page two. Which is sixty-six thousand nine hundred eighty-two dollars, loss of sixty-six thousand uh, dollars. Fortunately, we had all cashed it. Some of the some of the security uh, the investment, so we did not have as much. Otherwise, we could have had more. Um, are there any questions from anyone? Actually, we're going to wait and do questions at the end, Lena. When all okay. the reports are done, um, just with this many people on, uh, but people can okay. start typing their questions into chat. Um, so if you have a question specific, Lena, type it in there. So then, when we open questions, we'll be getting to those questions first. Lena, we jumped kind of quickly from from uh, I didn't get to show all of these, so I'm just going to yes. a second and make sure everyone could see these these numbers. We also will be putting okay. the minutes from the annual meeting on our website. All of our minutes from board meetings are going on our website. So if anyone wants to see what's going on, we're being very transparent. It's all there. These numbers will be there in members areas so people can see. And that was one of the biggest the main goal of tra uh, finance branch was to be very transparent that uh, during every meeting they would know where what the status of the service finance is. Okay, so great Lena thank you for sharing um, anything else that you were going to share or just wait for your questions that come in in that time frame. I will wait for the questions to come in, if that's fine. Okay. Or, or later, if you want to email me, if you have any questions, please, please feel free. Good. So, uh, Joanne, if you would be come up now and talk about member services. Okay, I'm ready to talk about member services. Um, Shyla, can you show that? graph of uh, member members. So as you can see by this graph, we had about 1,600 members um, on average um, pre-pandemic, uh, 2012 through 2019. And then of course the pandemic came and nobody wanted to travel or host. And so we dropped down to uh, in 2021, we have 675 active members. And I will so say thank you because I know the board sent out, please, we know you're not traveling, we know you're not hosting, but at that time we had an office and staff and we were trying to work virtually. And so dedicated Surbus members joined knowing that they wouldn't be traveling. So thank you for that. Then uh, we switched over to our new website um, in October of 2021, our new membership website. And at the end of 22, we had 1,239 members and then to date, as of the end of May, we're up to 1,475. So we're only 125 off of our um, typical average. Um, can you show the next graph, please? I can. So since October of 2021, we have had an increase of 800 members. Now, um, we started out with this transition of uh, not working with staff and volunteers. So we have had some dedicated 
interviewers who stuck with us through this transition who have done the bulk of the interviewing for these people. And as you can see, um, we have uh, diversified our age um, um, groupings. Before, it was a lot of elder, elder people that are in retirement and traveling stages. And uh, in the past uh, months, we've gained so 90 she's on the board down in Nebraska. Sorry about that. We've gained um, 90 people in their 20s. And we even have some people who are in their 90s that are lumped into the 80-year-old um, group. But And we also have in the 20s group. So anyway, um, I'm talking about the member services branch of uh, US Servos. And in member services, we have four teams of people who work. Um, the first team is our applicant support team. This is the team that deals with all the new applicants that come in. So we have uh, Ramona Haller, who is acting as our um, applicant manager right now. So she takes those new applicants, sends them out to a regional person who can try to find an interviewer so we can create local groups on the ground by interviewing people who are joining in that area. And then we have people who have access, um, administrative access to our, our um, membership database and serve us international so we can set get them uh, to fill out their accounts once they're accepted. So we have that team. We also have a team of member help people who help the current members who are renewing and need e stamps. So we have um, downloads of those orders a couple times a week, and then we have a dedicated group of volunteers go in renew them on Servos International, issue their e-stamp when it's ready or let them know they need to fix it before we can issue it. So we de deal a lot with um, the membership, the current membership. And then we also have a contact us um, link on our webpage that you can ask us questions. And since April of 2022, we have um, responded to nearly 1400 questions um, that comes in through through email or phone call. We also have a team that's the complaints resolution team. So once in a while, people have a really bad experience and they need to let us know because we need to have conversations with people that aren't providing um, a good name to serve us. So thanks to the complaints resolution team, they work on an as needed basis. And then we also have a newly established volunteer coordination team. And um, we have a link on our website. It's a volunteer registry. And if you have put your name in in the past, back because we didn't really have that volunteer coordination team established, we do now. And if you're interested in working on that as a volunteer or any of our other teams that you're going to hear about, um, we would love to have you reach out or reach out again if the cases you reached out in the past, reach out again. Put your information into that volunteer registry and uh, we'll make contact with you because you know we run on the power of uh, servos volunteers here um, and i want to give a shout out to all the volunteers because we have volunteers that work on several of these teams so a lot of cross team volunteers and um, we need uh, some more volunteers so we really appreciate you um, joining one of our teams it's um, uh, it's enjoyable to feel like you're contributing to something that you love. And uh, I want to thank you for your continued support of U.S. Servos and for your patience. Thank you. Great, Joanne. Thank you. So I am the next board uh, member who will get to present. I am the board liaison to the technology team. And we do have an exciting change happening uh, with the technology this year. And that is uh, based on the fact that we have a new membership level coming up. Uh, the board decided last year we're going to have two membership levels. And so I'm going to screen share. And one of our membership levels is now going to be a friend of US. And then we're going to have the host and traveler membership level as well. So what this means is people are going to join at the friend of US. And the benefits of being a friend is that they can attend virtual U.S. service meetings like this one. They can attend local events. They receive our emails. They have access to our members area, limited part of our members area on the U.S. service website. They can be part of our peace and justice team, which is an important volunteer team we have. And they can volunteer in limited roles 
primarily helping with peace initiatives. Now, these people at the friend level cannot host, they cannot travel, they do not have a service international profile, they do not get service international emails, um, they cannot vote or run for office, and they cannot volunteer as a full volunteer. So the host and traveler position is all of those benefits of being a friend of US service, plus this is what many of us are already. These are the people who do have a service international profile, they can host, they can travel, they can make friendships with service members around the world, they receive the service international emails, um, they can vote, they can volunteer, and they can run for office. So again, we're gonna have kind of an entry level, membership level, and then the host traveler level. And this is in the works. Uh, the Friend of U.S. Servas is a pre-interview level, and this is going to be similar to what Servas International is setting up. They're setting up what's going to be called an Amico level, which is also a pre-interview level. An Amico in Esperanto means friend. Um, so the new applicants, uh, once we go live with our system, the new applicants will start at the friend level. That's what's going to be costing the $33 that we're all used to right now. And then those volunteers, um, we're hoping our volunteers have this up this summer. So our goal is sometime in the next three months to have this all up and set and go live with it. Um, so the host traveler is that post interview, post orientation level uh, that we currently have. So this correlates to our current US service membership. Current members will automatically move to this level. So there's nothing those of us who are our members need to do to change. Um, everything will stay the same for us. There's no additional cost to be a host traveler level. And um, so just to emphasize though, members do not get access to the service international uh, platform until they've done the interview, done the orientation and become a host traveler level of membership. So this is going to be happening at some point um, this summer. We're hard at work at this. As you can imagine, any uh, big tech change uh, requires time and the, the whole team is really putting effort into that. I also wanted to point out uh, one other thing um, that the tech team is working on. And we are working on this in conjunction with the um, events and gatherings team. And Shelly Mitchell is the board liaison for events and gatherings. And what it is, is we want to get our events and gatherings more prominent, more information out about them. Uh, last year, a, an events posting um, was created a way that people could put local events um, onto the website to get an active service calendar. Um, there were some glitches and it kind of got ignored in the fall. There was a lot going on for the board and for the different teams. And it really, uh, we actually have heard of a couple of people who listed something there at the start of 23 and that it has not shown, um, didn't get processed right. And sorry about that if you were one of those people. We actually are working on that this June. We're hoping to have that fixed. And we really want to encourage local people who are planning events to post your event here so we can get it on the calendar. Uh, Joanne uh, was telling us last year that an event got put on the calendar Boy, Joanne, you're gonna to have to give me all the details, but somebody drove like someone from France was visiting. They saw an event on the calendar in the Midwest and they're like, hey, I can make it to that. And they drove like a hundred miles to get to a service event or something like that. I may be exaggerating, but you got the idea. Um, anyway, we want that to be able to happen. So I know like Salt Lake does local events and wouldn't it be great that any of service member traveling in Salt Lake could attend their local event. And other areas have those. I know summer's a big time for those local picnics. Seattle, Portland, we're planning to do those in these areas. So it'd be great that people visiting would know about that and could attend, as well as all the local people get that info, because we don't always do good at getting that info out. So again, do watch for this to be updated. You can already go do this. It's in the members area of our website under event support. Then you're gonna get a document where you just put in the information and then we'll be processing it for you. So please uh, do put your events on there. And that's what tech has going on. So the next person up is Bill.
Hi, um, my name is Bill McGargle. I live in upstate New York, and I'm currently overseeing a good sized portion of the community outreach uh, branch. Um, I know I wanted to cover a lot of material, and I tend to get fumbly and bumbly when I live speak. So I recorded um, a five minute and 17 second presentation that Shyla is about to start. I think Dan's actually going to be sharing it. Okay. Um, Hold on, it's coming up. And it's coming down. <laughs> okay, here we go. Exciting news in the community branch is our national conference, which is being held October 6 to 8, Friday evening to Sunday afternoon at Frost Valley YMP Camp. It's about two and a half hours north of New York City. Right. Where do you get more information about that? This. Well, guess what? We're using computers these days. Go to the US Service website. You don't have to log in if you only want to get information. At the top of the page, click on the What's Happening menu choice, then click on 2023 Conference. This will take you to the conference page. Here you can see what's happening for the three days of the conference. Before you register, I suggest you look at all the pages about the conference, as this will probably answer all your questions before you actually go to register. You navigate your way through the conference pages by clicking on the blue buttons near the top of the page. So let's look at venue first. The venue page has descriptions and photos of the main meeting space, Geyer Hall, and the main dining hall, Thompson Hall. It also includes a map of the campus and hiking trails in the area. The lodging page includes descriptions and photos of the housing options on campus, including yurts, cabins, four room lodges, a motel style accommodation, and a B&B accommodation. The page also has offsite options available, including camping. The presenters page includes bios of each presenter and a brief description of their presentation. The transportation page is an important one. It shows the five airports in the region and how to get from the airports to Manhattan. It also includes timetables and instructions on how to get from the New York Port Authority bus terminal to Monticello, New York, which is the closest stop to the venue. The region page includes points of interest in New York City, Sullivan County where the conference is being held, and the Finger Lakes region. Why not make it a vacation? After you've visited all the conference pages and planned your trip, you're now ready to register for the conference. If you are a U.S. Service member, we recommend you log in as this will automatically complete your contact information on the registration form. Click the blue register button at the bottom of the page to actually begin your registration. The board has set a priority this year to reaffirm the Peace Party U.S. Service. We're not just a travel group. In March, we established the first U.S. Peace Awards to recognize members who inspire us by doing a bit more to promote peace and justice. We currently have two nominees, but we know there are just many other members doing noteworthy things. So please, by all means, nominate them. We're not looking for superheroes or Nobel Peace Prize candidates, just members doing a bit more. So why do we have an award? Well, first, to recognize the member and hopefully inspire others to do a bit more. The hitch is that most of the people doing this kind of work are doing it from their heart, not for recognition. When asked to be a nominee, they often say things like, well, there's a lot of other people doing more, etc. So how do we motivate them to become a nominee? Well, a sizable donation to the NGO with whom they work is often a good motivation. Here's how to nominate someone. Log in to U.S. Service and click on the Members Area menu item. Then choose U.S. Peace Awards. This will open the Peace Awards nomination page on our website. Review the criteria on the page and then complete the nomination form. And when you're finished, click Submit. That's all there is to it. This year, Open Doors has gone out on February, March, April, and May. 
the May issue was sent out to 2,700 readers. More than 60% opened the email containing Open Doors. This is a high number. There were more than 700 clicks on articles. Tice Sniffin is heading up the social media and silo teams. It is great to have some leadership in this area. The first step is reorganizing and revamping the social media sites. He could use some help with this. Anyone interested in, in social media, be it Facebook or Twitter, please offer to help by contacting Tice. Also, anyone who uses Facebook should be sure to follow U.S. Service, as this will get us more contacts. The Service Youth Language Experience team is connecting with other countries and improving the process. They are revamping the application process for both international youth wanting to visit the U.S. and for U.S. members wanting SILA exchanges overseas. Members wanting to host a SILA visitor or knows people who would like to be a SILA traveler should contact the SILA team. And that's it for Bill. Bill and Shyla, back to you. You're both muted. Go ahead and stop screen sharing. Um, I noticed there were some, some chats from people about the conference. Uh, the site will be live tomorrow. So um, the stuff that I showed, you can go and do it. There's one, one last little item that needs to be fixed, and it'll be active maybe late tonight or early tomorrow. Great. Okay, Dick, this is actually uh... it's it's the opportunity. So you were monitoring the questions coming up in the chat. Yes. And I'm gonna unmute Lena because the first few that came up were had to do with finances. So we do have a few questions for you, Lena. <clears throat> um I did try to send them to you, so I don't know if you've seen a couple yes, of them yet. Okay, the first one was what percentage does the sixty six thousand dollar loss represent of total investments? I'll have to get back to you, calculate that and let you know okay. if that's okay. I can send it to uh, before the end of the meeting. I'll okay. put it in the chat. Great. For everyone. And then another question on finances is we were asked, is the unrealized loss lower as of today since the market yes. is up since December? Yes, definitely. We, if you can, if you see the first document in that, it shows that our investment uh, value has increased uh, in last four months as of this year, January 1st. Great. And then another some, uh, question for the finance team, uh, not just about your report, but we did have the question is, does the servers have an investment policy? Yes, we do. Uh, recent, uh, we have a team that oversees it. And also we have a, a policy to, um, to, to invest in a socially responsible investments, also do it in mutual funds as much as possible, rather than the individual securities. In nutshell, that's what it is. And it's seen by, it's not just one person handling. We have a team that handles someone who is experienced in investment, is handling it and then he we, we all review it in the team. Great. And um, and keeping in mind, we are looking for volunteers across the board on all our teams. So if you have a background in um, finance. in finance, uh, really consider getting on one of the finance teams on the investment team. We are open to new volunteers. We are open to a diverse people joining us with different ideas and input. So please consider volunteering um, if you have a, a question or concern about a team, especially, and have skills to contribute to that team, sign up for it. Okay, we also, I think those were all of our um, budget related questions. No others came in from that. Um, so, but I, we do have a couple other questions um, on different topics. So one came in, and it looks like it was maybe posted a couple times, but it was asking, what was the goal of substantially reducing the dues? And uh, the question kind of came up is, since our, our membership is back, aren't we leaving some money on the table by not charging what we did before? 
Now, I was not on the board when the decision came through, but I, I did talk to board members at the time. Um, I believe there was several things in consideration. Uh, one was the fact is uh, it put us more in line with other service international countries. We were by far the country charging the most for traveler dues than any other country. Also, at the time when we were charging that much, we had an office, so we had to pay for rent, uh, insurance of an office, things like that. Uh, we also had paid staff. With all that gone, we do not need the same level of money coming in to cover our costs as a, as a community. Also, to keep us competitive out there, to draw in younger members, it seemed like the bar was a bit too high for younger members to join at the previous price point. And so we do want to make sure that we're bringing in people that were a thriving organization. And definitely there was thoughts in that. Uh, does anyone else on the board want to talk well, about that decision? I, th I thought you gave a nice explanation of that, of the rationale behind the change. Uh, and there's the opportunity if somebody feels like they're willing to to uh, provide more money than the $33, uh, there's the opportunity to make a donation over and above that. Uh, and so I was wanna invite that. Uh, but what we were looking at is based on our actual expenses, what would be a fair price uh, for members? And this has worked out well. We are financially solvent. Uh, we're bringing, still bringing in more uh, revenue than we are expending. Uh, and we are looking at how we can use those, that, that resource uh, for the work of the organization. Shyla, can I add something? Um, sorry, who said that? Carol. Oh, Carol. Verbal. Oh, also, yes, Carol. also, costs have changed. We used to send out books. There was a lot of people met it cost a lot to handle all those books and mail them and all that stuff. We're not doing that. And I believe the way that Servas International is charging us for memberships and the way they're charging for travel has also changed. Yes. Yeah. Yep. And uh, Phyllis pointed out in the chat that before we, we, you know, basically it was free to be a host and we only charge for travelers. So $33 is, is in more of an even balance and it's a more even flow. And then we don't get hit so much in times when people can't travel because they're still the host. Joanne, you unmuted. Did you have a comment on this one too? Oh, I was just going to say at the time, Rada, who was our treasurer, said if we could get a thousand members at thirty-three dollars, we would be fine. So that was kind of our goal at that time when we were down to six hundred and some members. <laughs> yes. Um, it was asked if we would be sending the PowerPoint slides. We will be putting. Um, you know, again, we're taking minutes of these meetings. The minutes will be on our website, so they will be available. The, these uh, graphics will be available. Um, so yes, we are making sure that we um, we get uh, get the information out for people if they want to review it again. Uh, Kathy did make the comment that she thinks lowering the cost is pretty essential for getting more diverse members, and I would agree, Kathy. We want to make sure um, we have that. Um, it was asked how many interviewers we have. Uh, we currently have around 75 interviewers. Um, I believe so far this year, something like 69 have actually conducted an interview. So interviewer though is not the same um, uh, only volunteer role as before. Uh, in the past, that was kind of our entry level volunteer position. Now we're looking for a whole bunch of different volunteers with different skills. We're also looking to add a welcome team across the country for when we get new members that we can hook them up with someone local that welcomes them, that makes sure they feel greeted and appreciated. So we're going to be looking for a whole new team of volunteers to be on that. So, um, you know, we're fine with the number of interviewers. We actually don't don't need necessarily more in the interviewer realm in that one role, but we need lots of interviewers and a lot of other new and exciting positions across. So again, get your name on that interviewer or on the volunteer registry, and we'll be contacting you and talking um, to people about the, the possibilities. Yeah. Um, it was asked about a gift membership. Um, <clears throat> once we get the friend, <clears throat> sorry, the friend membership up and going, the friend level, we'll be able to look at, <coughs> excuse me, the gift membership. Let me take a drink. 
Okay, we had a great question come up and it said, uh, do we have reason to believe that anyone actually wants to be at the friend level? Does anyone want to be a friend of US Service? Great question. Two parts. Yes, actually we found last year that some people would have stayed at a friend level. We actually had people who did join and never got, uh, they did do their interview. So they, they technically became a, a member based on our, our levels last year, but they never got, went out to serve as international. They never put up a profile. They never connected with another person. They would have been fine staying at the friend level. And we had other people who joined because they loved our idea of peace, but then some people actually for, asked for money back because they said, well, I found out I couldn't travel. I wanted to support your group, but since I can't travel, I think I need to leave your group. No, at the new friend level, that, that's great. You can be there. And we, we want to be able to communicate better that not every member needs to travel. Um, they can just be supporters of the ethos of our group, which is about peace through connection. So there are definitely some people who would have stayed at that level. Definitely the majority of people who join are joining to host and travel and are going to want to move on. Our issue this past year is our onboarding process was so cumbersome on the volunteers. And now that we are an all volunteer um, organization, it became very burdensome on the people in some small teams who are doing a lot of work to onboard people. We were doing a lot of chasing down new applicants to say, are you ready to interview? Are you ready to interview? Are you ready to interview? With this new system, boom, they apply, their, they um, pay their fee, and they're going to be a friend. Then to move to the next level, they are going to be self-directed. They'll do it when the time works for them. Often people want to do it. They might join, but they're not taking a trip for six months, so they don't want to do it for three or four months. So instead of us chasing them every couple weeks, they'll get to decide when the time is right for them to move on to the next level and do the interview and do the orientation. So a lot of the two level is to make it easier on us as volunteers. But we want that. We want this group to be fun for everyone. We want to not burn out our volunteers to overwork them. We want people to enjoy this organization. So that's a big goal. So that's a great question about why we're doing the friend. And I hope that answers it. Um, there were several questions about is the conference going to be um, in person or hybrid this year. The plan is for that it's in person. Um, there's a lot of complications to doing um, hybrid meetings. Um, and so that's why, again, we pulled out this annual meeting, which is really important to have attendance and we're having it separate from the rest of the conference. So for this, we can do this via Zoom, get people across the country. Um, in the past, you know, only so many people could go to the in-person meeting. Um, and so we wanted to get more um, involvement at the annual meeting, get more people knowing what's going on in the organization. Um, okay, Dan, have you seen any questions that I've missed? There was a question about hybrid, if the conference will be have some hybrid options. So is there going to be any virtual things? That well, that's will be what I just said. We're not intending anything virtual. There's a lot of um, complications and, um, and, and organization involved in that. We can always see as we get closer, but that's not the intention. Our intention is for, for this to be the virtual meeting and for the in-person conference to be an in-person conference. And, and it's also a matter of bandwidth. Uh, the location of the conference is in the mountains. It's a gorgeous location. They do have Wi-Fi on the campus, but because the suppliers of the Wi-Fi can only run so much lines there that if everybody got on the phone at once, the whole thing would collapse. So there, yeah. there's actual technical reasons too. So. I see another great question from Catherine. Um, so she's saying she has an idea for programming. She's asking if anyone has ever attended the Zoom regional programs that Southeast Asia has recently put on. She said she attended a few of them and they were great. I know recently um, the peace secretaries did uh, one that a lot of people across our country attended. The, the Service International Peace Secretaries did one um, about the uh, Turkey and what's going on there and how to support the peace school. I will say during the time of COVID, when so much went virtual, uh, we had an events team that did an amazing job of planning virtual events. 
they did everything from having events where people got to share some of their service experiences as travelers, as hosts. They had speakers coming in. They really did a wonderful um, couple years of great uh, programs. And thank you to everyone who served on that team. Uh, for various reasons that, that stopped this past year, there were so much other things going on in the restructure of Servas that really a lot of our virtual events just, just got put on hold. There just wasn't uh, the volunteers to keep it going for this past year. But it is something we're talking about on the events and gatherings team that we'd like to see that back. We'd like to have some more virtual events for those who can't attend everything in person. So great idea, Catherine. I love to see it there in comments. Again, anyone's interested in getting involved with that, put your name on the volunteer list and say that you're interested in the events and we'll talk to you. Even if it's just because you have ideas about them, put your name on that, that list and we can, can chat about the ideas. Um, let's see, I'm just taking a quick look down to see if there's any other questions we missed. I will, I will add one, Shyla. I see, um, uh, I'm not saying if, sure if her name's right, Maria and Baba did a suggestion about finding more avenues to support a more diverse base of members. It's a great idea. And the way to take that forward is to get involved, volunteer, come and um, uh, get us those ideas, help us find those uh, ideas for where we can do that. Get involved and we can, those are definitely in line with our, our um, what Servos wants to do. And I would agree. We actually, uh, the board had a, in a board retreat in April. We um, got together in California and we were talking and that was one of the topics we talked about is the fact that we need to consider how to get more diverse base, how to uh, recruit um, new members uh, that cover um, diversity and reach out to different communities that maybe we haven't um, tapped into um, at, a, at a rich um, level before. So thank you for that. It is something that we've discussed. We would love ideas on how to do that. We would love to open that conversation to all members and bring that forward. Um, I think we need with that, Dick, we probably need to move that, our small- that, that, That's where I was thinking too. And so if you would bring up that the last page of material I sent you, uh, because what we'd like to have is a conversation about what it means to be a peace organization. And uh, when we look at what we've said publicly, uh, even on our website, it says, uh, the goal of service is to promote peace and understanding between people by providing opportunities for deeper, more personal contacts between different cultures. So what, what does that really mean? And what we've said in the past has been primarily through our hosting and travel experiences. And what we'd like to do is break back into our, our small groups, uh, be the same group that you were in before, and we'd like you to think about these questions. Uh, what do you believe it means for Servas to be a peace organization? And is there a role beyond linking travelers and hosts for service to be a peace organization? And what additional activities would you want Servas to engage in that would contribute to peace? And I put in a couple examples because we've been asked to be making public statements and also taking positions and funding things. Uh, but we have hesitated on that as we've been trying to answer this question about what is appropriate for us to do. And then how would you personally like to be involved in such peace related activities? So if you think about these kinds of questions in terms of what does it mean to be a peace organization? Uh, what else should we be doing beyond just traveling and hosting? Uh, what would those things look like? And how would you like to personally be involved? Uh, we're going to break uh, for uh, about uh, 15 minutes, uh, 12 minutes, 10 minutes, 10 minutes, 10 minutes, 10 minutes yeah. in terms of where we are with time. Uh, and then we'll come back together. And what we're going to ask is rather than uh, calling on everybody, since we have uh, over 60 people here, again, if you would, um, once you come out, uh, type in some of your thoughts that came out of your conversation uh, into the chat, and we'll have a chance to report out on that. And after the meeting, we will be able to collect more of that and make sure that's part of the minutes 
uh, you'll be able to see the, the wide range of ideas that are going to come out of this discussion. And the board is really interested in hearing from you around this. So I look forward to uh, you in your small groups and then what we uh, come up with to report out. And Dan, if you are able to ask everyone to unmute, again, it's easier if you unmute before you go to the breakout room. So if you could start unmuting yourself, if you have not. And, and stop the sharing. Uh, really? Thank you, stop the sharing. And wow. we are going to stop the recording now too, because that was the bulk of the meeting. So we're going to stop recording this. And so you're ready to send us.